Okay, perfect. So what we did is we designed Hydro with the purpose of trying to grab all the information you need to actually dry a building. You know, a lot of the systems, actually every system that was designed before this was about reporting to a carrier and appeasing a carrier, even if the things on site weren't done right or they weren't being done to help you. So when we designed this with that whole premise in mind, it was how are you going to get data in the field, only use the data once, only duplicate it once, which is at the time you're, you're originating the data, and then can it drive better decisions for the technicians? And what we've seen in the last 10 years is that we got de declining skills in the, in the field. So that means that the technology has to come and bridge the gap between our experienced staff, which are normally in the office, and our field staff. And I'm gonna walk you through that. If you guys have any questions, ask them as we go. For those of you that haven't seen Encircle, what we do, and I'm just gonna give you a brief explanation, is when we get into the mobile app and onto the field, what you're seeing is everything running off my uh, Samsung. We take our photos left to right and we build the file out like a building's built. So you have the building, the house, and then in there you have these rooms. And inside the rooms, you've got all the photos that you would do. And you would do your documentation when your texts show up, 365 degree photos, you would do uh, videos, you would note pre-existing conditions. And what you're trying to do is reduce that liability and increase the justification for your charge out. Now, what we're able to do here when we take it into hydro is now what we're doing is we're not only justifying what you need to do, we're making sure that the things that get done on the job site are actually delivering a better result for your res restoration company. That reduces your liability, not only from a loss perspective, but also from the review and getting scrub, you actually have real data that you can support why you made the decisions you made. So in here, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna come back to the job. We're gonna click on the hydro tab and I'm gonna go inside there and I'm gonna run off of the phone. Now, the first screen is a project management screen. Anytime you go to a job, you need to see exactly what's happening on the job and you need to know how to make better decisions. This screen is gonna be evolving. We're working on the workflow and we wanna really evolve this. And what you're gonna see is that decision-making ability is all surfaced up here. So when you get into the job, you know exactly what's happening. I'll show you what it looks like at the end because once we put the data in, you'll actually see what I'm talking about. We have the ability to see all these rooms and, and they all come in as unaffected to start. So we make the assumption that you have all these rooms documented and then you'll parse them into the right spots. And we do that with a really easy to use workflow. Now we don't force technicians in the field to go through a workflow, but what we do is we put the most organized and best practices together to get you through. And so what you're seeing here is a checklist of things that you can go through in each section allows you to put in data that may unlock another area. So we can't put drying chamber information in unless we establish what our drying chamber is. That's the only real lock. There's a couple others that are dependent on other information, but Right now, anything in black, I can go and do that out of order. And the reason why is not always when you go to a job site, you're gonna have the information or the ability to do something in the exact order that a software is gonna tell you. The job of a software is not to tell you what to do, it's there to help make sure you get what the information you need to, to collect is. So we go to source of loss, I'll start at the top. If we come in here, ruptured water line. I would then come in and I would tap on the category of water. Now this is at the source. So if we had a ruptured water line, we'd have a clean water loss. We go in there, say it's a cat one. Then we would set up our drying chamber. And in here, as I tap on these rooms, what you're gonna see is that we have affected and unaffected rooms. Now in a smaller job or whenever you're building your chambers, you wanna reduce the amount of administration work. So sometimes you'll put an unaffected hallway or an unaffected room in between a bunch of affected rooms so that you only have one chamber. We do that here, we can basically come in and say, hey, you know what, this one's not affected, but we're gonna use it. And what this is gonna do is help us build our dehumidification calculation. So inside the app, we're actually gonna help you size the job properly. And what we found is that it usually increases your equipment consumption or the equipment on site by between 40 and 60%. Most people don't put enough equipment on, most technicians are undersizing their jobs. And there's a lot of reasons why, but you have to understand what should be there and then you can start figuring out how to get either to that number or having the conversation with you need more power or it's going to take longer to dry. We put in a chamber. Now, if I want to create more chambers than just this one, all I have to do is tap on the add chamber and then I hit complete task. Now in here, we're coming in with our thermal hygrometer 
And all we need to do is put in two readings. We need to put in a temperature and we need to put in our relative humidity. It's gonna give you all the other things, the humidity ratio, vapor pressure, dew point. And then you have the ability to take a photo of your information right there. Now, if we were actually submitting this, it would show that our RH and our temp are different than what our reading was. So this comes to a data integrity. If you're, if you're not playing program work, you're doing independent work, you're gonna be able to validate your readings were, were true and with the information you put in is validated there. It reduces the amount of review time that you're gonna go through when you do go into a reviewer that knows what they're looking for in the moisture side. Then we do our unaffected air reading. In here, you'd be grabbing it from a different part of the building that's not affected. So in here, let's go to 7540 and we would select a room. Now what you're gonna see is the remaining unaffected rooms are there. So let's go put this in, the, in a family room and hit save. And anything that you're doing, if we wanna go set the dry standards, we can. Now, what we learned from building this, now this is our first program, we've actually had it in the market for four years. We saw technicians that were finding unaffected spaces that were becoming high with moi uh, impacted with high moisture uh, content, uh, high relative humidity. What we found is that the, the number one avenue was the HVAC was going, the moisture was traveling through the HVAC system and they weren't locking out and they didn't realize they were creating this high humidity situation up in the uh, unaffected space. So we put this in where you could take a reading of the HVAC. All you have to do is go to a register and you could take a reading of it. And then what we'll do is we'll be able to tell you whether the HVAC system is helping or hurting your effort or is it impacting your unaffected spaces negatively. If you don't want to use it, all you have to do is come in here and say yes, but we're not monitoring it or no, there's no HVAC and it won't ask you for any readings for the rest of the job. We're not there to tell you that you have to grab every reading. All we're going to do is help you manage the job for what you're doing. The best part about this green, when you see this green, you have to understand how a technician works in the field. They don't work in an office at a desk. They're going to be tapping out of the job. They're going to be closing their phone out. They're going to be moving equipment, talking to people, and then coming back and trying to figure out what to do. This allows them to know what, where they are in the process and what they need to do. Now, at this point or any point, you can scale up. You can have multiple technicians working in the job. So if I'm on a commercial loss, I can have multiple technicians in the chamber doing stuff, or I can have multiple chambers being worked on by technicians. So from a commercial aspect, we're able to handle that larger job as well and really drive home the efficiency of a project manager. They can come into the app and see what's happening in all the building without having to walk around and pull paper. When we look at our dry standards, we put some smart technology in here because most techs use the same meter. So our meters are classed for the technician what was the last probe type they used for that material? And then we'll pull that in when they when they set their dry standard with that, we, we pull it from the last time they used the app. Uh, and then when we also look at it, we pull from the dry standard what type of reading they're going to take when they're doing their moisture content readings. So in this case, this would be a FLIR 100%. Uh, we're using the pin. And then what we do is we put in our, our dry standard and we put in the variance from the IICRC of 10% or less. You can change this and it sets our drying goal at 5.5. You can take a picture of the moisture content on the wall so that it's validated if you choose to, you don't have to, and then you can hit complete task and you've done that. Now, as we come through, we work our way through the drying chamber, and this is where all the dollars are made and lost, is really inside the drying chambers. And you're gonna have drying chambers that change as over time, or they're gonna change because of the different conditions that you run into. Um, so we're gonna be able to make adjustments to these chambers as we go. We come in, we take our affected reading. Now, what you're gonna see here, I'm gonna put this in at 65 degrees and we're gonna have a 65 humidity. We could take our picture and the other part in here is we're gonna put a room in. And where we want to select the location is so that we take it and we identify where in the chamber do we take this reading? Well, we took the reading in the dining room. Now, what we're able to do is we're able to come back through and put those in and show where we're getting all that information on a regular basis. I'm just going to clear this off so we don't get any phone rings here. Now, the other part is we come to add HVAC again. If we're not going to monitor it, we say, yeah, it's there, but we're not monitoring it. We hit save, the rest of the job that won't show up. And then what we're starting to get into is a little bit of what we call front loading the job. If you put a little bit of time up front, getting your dimensions set, 
we're going to be able to tell you what your equipment load should be based on the IICRC recommendations, and that's where you're going to start. And then throughout the entire job, we're going to be able to help you manage the changes that come at you. So if you need your relative humidity is too high uh, or your grains are too high, we can reduce it down by adding more equipment or increasing our temperature. If we're getting into a situation where um, we were too cold and our equipment's not in its range that we want to run in, we can then have the technician alerted that, hey, the operating temperature or the environment is too cold, you need to raise the temperature to get us where we wanna be. We start that with this room. And so we're gonna go into the living room and in here, what you're gonna see is all these shapes. And all you have to do is put the measurements of the walls in, 25 by 20. We can put in our height. Let's put a 12 foot ceiling in. You have the ability that you can put in actual lengths, but most people don't do that. When you go to a job site, you're looking at a job, you're gonna to run to percentages and say, you know what? I think the floor is about 90% uh, impacted. The ceiling, ceiling's 10% impacted and the walls are 20% impacted and there's two offsets. When you do that, we're automatically running the calculations in the back end of the app. I'm going to quickly pop through here and just drop these in. And if you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to, to throw them in the, uh, in the chat and we'll, we'll take those as we go. Now, what you'll see is unaffected. So why are we doing the unaffected? Well, we have a hallway that we need to calculate the air for the dehumidifier. Instead of doing all the readings, all the affected area readings, we can just come in here and we can basically just run this as a uh, length width height. Let's put it as an actual eight foot. And all we're doing is that. You're not seeing any of the affected area because there is none here. So it's just that. And when we hit done, we have all the information we need to now size the job. Now, when you get into a job, if we go to a, a technician and say, hey, you have to moisture map every job, that's fine. But if we send a crew out at two in the morning, I'm not expecting that the team's going to do all the administration work that day, and they don't have to. If we're putting moisture points into a building, we could put stickers on a wall, and then tomorrow we can come back, or the next day we can come back when we have a little bit more time, and we can then get the sketch together. We can put the moisture map together and put where all our moisture points are in a room. So you have the option. You can either do a moisture map, which is fairly simple. I'll do one in the dining room here. And what we do is we draw it in, and we put in the room shape here, and as we tap this out, it's going to draw in the walls as well. And we can move the walls in and out. Uh, if we have a wet ceiling, we can put the ceiling in there as well. And if you want to put any openings, we can tap those in in there as well. Now, you have a bunch of options inside our sketch. You can add photos to it. So you can provide context to what type of door it is. Windows are there. Um, we can draw our moisture map. And we can show where the water is. It's really quick, and this is part of the front loading because we have technicians and, and project managers that have to make decisions on the job later on. You're going to be able to quickly go through and get this information uh, captured. Now, after I do the moisture map, I have an option. I come in here and I can do moisture points. I only have the moisture points in the affected room, so it tells my technicians that we're only worried about those two getting those moisture points. In here, I can put it on a map or off. So I'm going to do the off the map selection because it's going to be a quick selection. We're on a job site. We've already put the sticker on the wall. And now we're going to take our moisture point. We're going to measure drywall. And it says, do you want to measure it or do you want to set the job up? No, we'll take the measurement. And in here, it remembers what the moisture point that you're, you're doing is, what our, our drying goal for that uh, material is. So the technician sees that goal while they're, they're taking the reading. Here's the meter that you should be using because that's what you took the dry standard in. There's your pin type. And then in here, we could put in 100% wet and we could put a surface temperature in there of 62. And we can then take a photo of everything that we need or add notes or just hit save. And then your readings are all now done. And you can just keep adding in moisture point after moisture point, moving it around, putting it in the different spaces there. Uh, so I see a question here. Is it on the horizon for Encircle Hydro to integrate with PSA Web? Uh, I do know that our integration teams are working together. Um, that should not. Uh, um, now, is it the question is, is it Hydro reports or is it the Hydro um, like dashboard would be the question. We go back to you, Taylor. And then what we'll do reports. Yeah, I'm, I'm 
going to say that we're still working on our hydro reports, getting the uh, finished products out. We have a couple of them uh, done, which then when PSA can pull uh, the reports all in, that'll just be one of the, the reports that comes with it. Then what we have is we have our drying chamber settings. Now this is a little bit more advanced and you would see this on commercial losses in the past. What we were able to do is program this from a, a company level so that you know you can have a standard applied to the job and they can be modified by the technicians on site. Now, what we're looking at is we're looking at our main floor chamber and includes these rooms in the hallway. And then down below, we have what is basically the start of a drying plan. Drying plan includes setting a drying goal. So the drying goal on the, on the drywall was 5.5%. Now what we're doing is we're setting up, how are we gonna get to that goal? And we're gonna build our drying uh, plan off of how we set up our chamber. In here, we have our class of water. Now this will pull in what, based on the percentages we put in the rooms, this will automatically tie this in uh, and tell you, hey, you have either class one, two or three or if you have materials that have been deemed as specialty materials or harder to dry materials, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna get a recommendation that this is a class two, but you have class four materials. And then your technician can make the, uh, the choice that they wanna do uh, in that chamber. And then that'll affect the calculation. Now we have the ability to put this into drying for stabilization. So if you have to stabilize, you can set up the parameters in a different uh, context. You have dew point differential. Now this matters because if the humidities get too high and we create condensation in cold surfaces, then we're gonna to wanna to prevent that. And that dew point differential we can manage between the surface temperature of the material and the atmosphere in the air. And we can set alerts saying, hey, you're too close to that, that tolerance that you set. We wanna increase your temperature or increase your dehumidification. That's a recommendation you would get. You would be able to pick which way you're gonna go and you'll be able to make a better decision. We have our temperature range, 80 to 95 degrees. So you could change this. If you said, no, you know what? In this specific job, we can't make it more than 80 degrees. You could come in and you could set that as a temperature range of 70 to 80. As a project manager, you're in charge of, of figuring out how you wanna dry this building. If we get to relative humidity, we might say we want a relative humidity of zero to 50. So that no great, if it's greater than 50, we trigger an alert. Uh, if we were doing a museum or a wine cellar, we might want to say that in here we want 30 to 50. If it's too low, it's too dry. And if it's too wet, it's, it's no good for us either. We set that. Now it's based on the chamber. So each chamber would get its own tolerance to set, but you would already have these set as a company and you would just make the adjustments as you need. Then we have our equipment calculation. This is where things can start to get really exciting. If you use a standard equipment calculation from the IICRC, so it's the simple calculation it gets you down to about the bottom 20% of what you need. And then with the way the programs are all set in the uh, in North America, you have a day, day and a half to be able to figure out how much more dehumidification you need to add to get to a good drying start. Using the detailed or, and a lot of guys use this on commercial, but if you use the detail uh, calculation, you can get closer to that right starting point and then make smaller adjustments, which means you're getting more drying impact for the limited amount of time that you get paid for drying. In here, if we were doing residential, we would then have an average uh, building. Our building construction is based on our quality of our materials. Now, if we had a class four material, you could say it was high end. We're gonna look at the HVAC. Is it supporting or is it not supporting? If it's not supporting, it's gonna increase the amount of dehumidification you require. We look at the prevailing weather. Is it favorable, neutral, or unfavorable? And so you would set that based on the, uh, on the outside conditions. And then we look at how tight is that building? Are we losing that dry, uh, dry air through building doors open uh, being opened? Or are we losing it through the building envelope itself? So you can say it's moderate. And after we do that, it throws out your pint capacity, your air mover capacity in all the rooms. Now in here, it lets you look at it so that you understand what's happening on the job and we're able to, to break this down for the chamber so you can see what's happening in every room. The goal is, is that at this point in the real world, you'd be coming in and, and you'd be going in and, and mentioning to the technician, hey, I'm gonna need you to start grabbing some air movers off of there. Can you put 12 in the living room? Can you put three in the dining room? Work starting to happen at this point. Yeah, go ahead with your uh, question uh, about the notes and uh, photos. If you put that in there, I'll, I'll grab that in a bit here. 
And then what we do is we have our equipment placement. Now this is something that we've, we've brought out. This is part of our, uh, our system and we've got an improvement coming. You're gonna be able to go in and place equipment and it tells you what you need. So inside this chamber, you're gonna need 274 pints. If you come into a room and you add a dehumidifier and we go and drop a dehumidifier onto a job here, pulls from our list, we put it in. Now, when we say yes, no, no, we can skip that, but we want that on there. Our pints are dropping. So it's telling the technician, we're pulling these pints away. We go in, we want, we want to level out or balance out our dehumidifiers. We're going to go put one in the dining room and we'll do the same thing. We're going to populate it here. Now, what's going to change here is we've got a rapid enter. So if you got to put in multiple pieces of equipment, uh, instead of doing it one by one, like I'm showing here, it's going to be a multi tap. You're going to tap out the three pieces of equipment you want and you're going to put it in and uh, uh, drop it in there. It, it tells you that you need 18 more. When you hit that, that number goes away. So if we go in and say we want to put a dehumidifier in that unaffected hallway as well because we want to balance out our drying, we can do that. Um, and we can basically put this in like that and then we're good. That's off and now we start putting our air movers. Now that rapid equipment. Uh, drop in is coming, I, I think, in the next few releases. I, I, they're just working on how to get, you know, 30 air movers onto a job in one go. Um, so we'll be doing that, and that'll be an improvement coming down the pipe. And then what we have is we have the last step, which is take our dehumidifier readings. So this is something that we, we you know, as an owner, I ran into, and we ran a lot of issues. We would take our, our dehumidifier reading, and we would come in here, no problem, we'd take it. One of the things that we didn't capture was the hours on the equipment. And so when we ran into long dry times and we went back and looked at jobs, we found out that a lot of times we weren't looking at how long was the dehumidifiers running. It was, people were turning them off when we left. They may only run two, three hours. So what we did is we put that in here so that you could put in the, the clock on, on what your running time is. You could take a photo of it and put that run time in there as well. And then the next time you come, your technician sees that it's only been like three hours of runtime. That's a conversation to have with the homeowner, maybe a conversation to have with the adjuster. But for you guys, we're logging that information in here. Why? Because if there's a problem with condensation and there's a problem in the job, we're going to want to note that. Now, if we see this, we may go and talk to the homeowner. We could put in here, spoke with the homeowner regarding turning off the dehumidifiers and advised them it would in fact it would impact uh, dehumidification and condensation. Hit done, hit save, that note is gonna live with that dehumidifier. If we keep going in, we might see that we have something over here where we have 100 degrees, 75, sorry, 17. And then we could come in here and if we see there are hours, maybe we're running 23 hours, we could come in and we could put a note in there that, you know, everything looks good or maybe a breaker broke and you got to fix the power solution, whatever you need to do. You just have the ability to note it there. When we hit complete task, now you'll notice that we got out of there and I still have a dehumidifier reading um, that's still needed. We have an alerts page that is just about to be released on here as well, which will basically tell you all the things that are missing. Now, we're not forcing a technician to capture all the data because in the real world, if you put people into a fake corral or, or a, a workflow that doesn't actually uh, have the ability of being accomplished and you can't move on to the next task without getting past the, the blocking task, what you get is you get bad information, fake information put in so that your tech can keep moving in the job. That's not good for your company. You'd rather say, hey, we didn't take that dehumidifier reading rather than put a fake reading into it. So what we do is we allow them to bounce around. Plus that dehumidifier may still need to wind up and they gotta come and do other things. They gotta go do other documentation. So we don't prevent them from doing it, but we will be identifying exactly what's happening on the job, what needs to happen, uh, what did you miss? What should you be picking up? And then that way your technician's able to, to figure it out for drying a job. Now, when you look here, you have your drying chamber. So you can look at your drying chamber. We, we, we're looking at 60 grains. You can compare that to your exterior and then you can compare that to your unaffected. We can go back and look at our vapor pressures, see how our unaffected areas are and our exterior are impacting our, our uh, drying chamber. Inside here, we're able to go back in, tap on a room and you can see the equipment. 
And then we can see what's happening inside the equipment, what's happening with the HVAC. And we can tap down. Everything in here is basically set up so that as a PM, you can go in, you can understand the job, and then you really got a good handle of what's happening on the job. But more importantly, we're taking all that office administration away of reviewing the paper and then coming in. All of it's been gathered now in the field, and it's actually faster to gather it in in circle than it is to do it at pen and paper, as long as you're doing the same information. So now that you have all that information coming in, you can actually start making those decisions. Are we in a position where we're inside our tolerances that we want? If we're not, we'll make that adjustment. Is it easy enough for our techs to do so that we can do get more information to protect the company we're in a high volume of claims? The, the answer would be yes, we can grab more information. But if we're going from one job to the next job and to the next job and we don't have the ability to grab all that information because we have to move, well, then you can move on and come back tomorrow and, and gather that information. And that's really the, the gist of... Uh, of hydro is it's there to help you dry the building in real world conditions and then our reports uh, if you have a report that a carrier requires all the outputs we can do in any format that they want so if you need a format for liberty or that's using a different systems reports we can make it look like that if you have a more detailed report that you're looking for we can do that and what we're looking at doing is we're because of the way we, way we built this we can actually draft a full narrative report like a consultant's report for you that says on day one we did this we saw this we made this change the category of water was a category three the iicrc definition of category three is this it just makes it easy that we can do all that high-end admin work for you so that you guys can focus on what really matters and that's drying a building and helping people get back after their disaster so that's hydro in a in a nutshell, and then it can expand into to commercial if you want to take it further. But that's really uh, that's really the program, cradle to grave. And uh, and then what I can do here is, if you give me a second, I can pull up a report and show you what the outputs look like. And so in here, what you'd be looking at is, oh, there we go. You'd be looking at your recommendations. Here's what you, you got for recommendations. Here's where your, your readings are. There's your meter, so it's providing you a photo. And we have different reports that we're right now building out. So you're gonna get simplified reports, you're gonna get more detailed reports, uh, all the way out to a narrative report like a, we would do if we were running a consulting job um, so that you basically get that just by showing up and doing the normal readings, you get that detailed work. We have it so that it's easy for a client to run and read. It's still wet. Here's what we're working on. Uh, as the report moves along, then you'll start to see these get checked off and it's like dry, dry, and it makes it easy for, for a uh, customer to read the report because uh, they're probably just looking for the blue and red and green. So, and that's it guys. That's, that's the uh, the hydro demo. If our equipment is barcoded and linked to PSA, can the tech scan the equipment rather than clicking on this? Yeah, you know what? So just to give you an idea of where we're building, it's a great question because what we're building in here right now is the foundation and you have to get that working on a manual system first. You always have to have a fallback that is super reliable. So that's where we're building first and make sure all the manual systems are reliable. After that, we're going to start bolting on the bells and whistles, which is integrations with Phoenix and Dryes and their remote monitoring, uh, integration with OmniSense and the remote monitoring tools from there. Uh, equipment tracking uh, it could be barcode, could be Kahi, which is a a, uh, a remote sensor. It's I got one back here. There's this these little uh, uh, beacons that you put on and. Inside there, they, they hook automatically to a truck. There's a whole bunch of technology that you can bolt on once you get the foundation uh, ironed out and figured out. Uh, so the barcoding with PSA is we, our, our plan is to be able to pull their inventory into our system and then everything just would be smooth and uh, would start pulling from, from that. We would load that, that inventory into ours. So yeah, absolutely. You don't wanna be running duplication on, on an inventory system. It just doesn't make a lot of sense. Great question.
And the, and I should probably, is there a tablet or a laptop version? Yeah, so another great question. Our, our, again, building the foundation, in the, in the past, what we saw is that when we built for an administrator, then, which is the desktop version, you're basically building an administrative platform. If you start there, you make a bunch of errors in the field. So you're, you're, you're trying to grab this piece of data and then you force it through a, a square peg in, uh, in a round hole out in the field. What we're doing this time is we're building everything to dry the building in the field. And then we're gonna build the dashboard and how the administrator needs to see the information. So it's, it's a little bit delayed, but it's coming in and, and that's the, the method that we're building it. And the, the result is that everything that we're doing in the field that's right from a procedural standpoint, from the standards or operations standpoint, can then be nicely funneled and sorted and organized in the office. And so that's lagging a little bit behind, but the reason why is it'll be a much better experience for the administrator to know exactly where everything is in the job inside the office. Um, so we do have, uh, will the report show the sketches with rooms connected to each other? Yeah, so that's another, another great question. Uh, we have the ability, we're working on integrations uh, with some of our outside partners. And, and so you got Matterport, we're already integrated with um, other sketch programs that are out there. It's actually an interesting space right now. You have a lot of change happening uh, in that environment right now. Here, actually, I'm going to share my screen. So you actually have a lot of, a lot of change that's happening. The iPhone proved that they could get some technology into a small device. We're looking at harnessing the, those technologies, but companies like Matterport are also moving their stuff to the portable or to the smaller device. That is where things all of a sudden get really exciting is when you can have every technician have the ability to do a sketch and scan. Uh, so inside our system right now, we're, we, we purposely have left that as like the last development. And part of the reason is we can do the, the relative sketch sizing and that works really well for what we needed to do. And we get lots of adoption from text for that. The reason why is that can be done quickly before the more detailed sketches come in. So if you're looking at an estimator who wants to build an Xactimate estimate, that usually takes a 24 hour turnaround. Almost any of the systems that you're ordering your sketches through will take 24 hours to order that through. And you know if it's 12 to 24, it's not good enough to get an initial report out. So our system right now serves that need for that initial report and then you can change it. And that's why we have that sketch and the, the uh, moisture points that are broken apart is you can do the moisture points today. If you intend on doing a Matterport sketch tomorrow uh, and you're waiting for it, then go do your moisture points like you normally would. Then tomorrow when you get the sketch, you can put them on top of that sketch uh, template. Um, but right now there's like, like I said, it's really exciting. The trouble that you're seeing with the LIDAR is that it's not as reliable at doing corners and angles. That's coming. I, we only think it's like iPhone 14 before it's like mainstream technology if they stick with it. But I think it's here to stay because there's a lot of VR capabilities that uh, you can get from it that they're looking for the consumer product. But we can use a lot of that and harness it. So that was a really good question. Does the app work if there's no connectivity? Yeah, absolutely. Um, if I show you this. So it's actually interesting. If you're a technician in the field uh, and you're working on a job, we have the ability that you can actually turn it off and go into offline mode if you want to save data. Now data is so cheap now, but five years ago it was more expensive, but it's so cheap now that there's really no need to do that because the productivity benefits outweigh any of the, uh, uh, any of the downside, which is you want to get that data into the office as quick as possible. You want that, that, that connectivity to be there. So if we go in, we can run offline. Your text will never know it. What you're going to see at the bottom here, if I go put some information in, what you're going to see if I go to add a room and we call it the bar, all this information just stacks up until we get a connection. When we get a connection, it just loads in and it syncs up. And so we have our thing, it's waiting, it's now syncing, it's complete, and you're, all your sync changes are out. It's super simple for your teams, you don't have to worry about it. Where you find that is you go from like into a high rise, you get into the basement, you lose your connection, your teams will still just be able to work like normal. Where they may have to come back to a signal is if 
they're trying to do some work in the same space, but that doesn't normally happen uh, in a building. You go in, you map it out, you get your, your layout, everyone comes back up to where you get signal, you sync the phones together, and then anyone that does work in any of those rooms, they're gonna be able to sync that data back uh, later on when everyone gets back to a connection. Great question, but yeah, no, you're not, you're not slowed down by, uh, by not having that. Uh, and I want to go back. I'll, I'll answer that question. So can you do an entire sketch? You could do a sketch and where we normally see people do it is on the exterior. You could come in and do a floor plan um, sketch. And the way you would do it, you wouldn't use this room tool here. What you do is you'd use the line tool in there. And when you click on the line tool, all you're going to do is tap on here and you can build out your rooms. Now you're going to do it more as a reference to your, uh, to your sketch than anything else, but you could come in, tap that out. And we see people doing this mostly on commercial losses, something with a little bit more value than residential, but it doesn't take long for you to just give the estimator a rough idea of what they were looking at for sizes and shapes of rooms. And then in here, you can come in and you can annotate it. So you can just come in, say, let's annotate in green. Master room. Bathroom. Six by nine. However you want to do that, you can easily put that in there and, and create the information. Where we find it is that it's text. So if the text have a low a uh, sophisticated tool, they can do it faster in the field. We don't necessarily need the exact shape drawn. We just need a reference of it so we can make our calculations. We'll gap, grab that detailed information in the, in the water damage. And then, like I said, if you're using any of the outside apps like Exactware or Matterport, you're gonna have that detailed sketch you'll be able to come back on to. If you later come back and you wanna bring a, a JPEG into our system and you wanna put it in there, you can drop a, an Xactimate screenshot in there. Uh, you can bring the whole the whole screenshot of the, everything. It depends on what you're doing, and uh, and where you need to do it. Great question. Perfect, guys. Well, I don't see any other questions popping in here. If you uh, if you have any, um, you can always reach out to us. Otherwise, I'll let you guys get back to uh, get back to your day. Thank you, Chris. We really appreciate you coming and uh, it was a great presentation. Uh, we appreciate you. And yeah, like Chris said, if you have any other questions, you can reach out to our support um, team and we will get back to you shortly. And this, uh, this video will be available to you. Uh, send us an email and we'll make sure you get the link to our, our YouTube channel. Thanks everyone. Have a great day. Thanks so much, Chris. That was great. Oh, no, appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, no problem. Anytime. Yeah, no, that you're, you're, you're you guys had everything set up. It was super easy today. Good. <laughs> All, All right, my dear. If you need anything, oh, let me know. Well, I, I will. Thank you. All right. Take care. Talk Bye. to you soon.